Right, well sharpening guys. This is my podcast, Wall Sharpening. And as promised, big announcement. Dan Chapman, the BKB fighter from my steak I'm sponsoring, has had an announcement. He's fighting for a world title 2021, the O2 Arena, against another Welsh boy, solid boy, Sean George. Um, the fight is taking place on the 27th of March, 2021, the O2 Arena. It's going to be a hell of a scrap. Sean George is an experienced boy, you know. He's um, he's got a lot of fights under his belt. There's not a lot of negative things you can say about his um, his fighting. To be honest with you, tough as they come. Another Welsh boy. It's great to see these Welsh boys doing so well. Um, you know, we back them all the way. Dan Chapman, tough as they come as well. This is going to be a hell of a scrap. Got every faith that Dan is going to is going to bring it home. Um, but great to see these Welsh boys doing so good. Um, another Welsh boy I'm sponsoring Daniel Lurwell. Solid. I mean, you, you want to see these boys knocking these bigger boys out. It's just crazy. So, as promised, Dan Chapman podcast. This is Welsh happening. The podcast with Dan Chapman. What's well, happening, sir? What's well, happening, Dan boy? <laughs> right then, uh, we got Dan Chapman in. He's uh, got a bit of news. So, uh, do you want to tell us, Dan, what's going on? Yeah, they obviously last week they they announced uh, my big fight, my bare knuckle fight um, for a world title. So it's going to be against Sean George uh, at the Auto Arena on the twenty seventh of March. Awesome, mate! And Sean George, another. Welsh boy, yeah, he's a he's a big operator in the in the BKB and he's worldly known, um, and he's a big puncher. You know, he's got that hard work and, and dedication, uh, and you know, in and he's in, in, and he is loved, in in BKB. So, you know, for me, it's not it's no better really to be up against for a world title because he's so respected in the yeah. sport, um, you know, and for me, is it's just what a great standing for me to really show my ability and my and my skills yeah and i just can't wait we've seen um seen a couple of clips of you training you're looking sharp mate oh nice one. it's just me for me it's just the last it's only i've been ticking over in my camp obviously we're in a lockdown yeah so, um gyms are closed so you know it's it's not the greatest thing to be honest with you because you know i do so much support in the in the whole of my community yeah you know, helping people stay fit healthy uh, and mentally fit as well so, yeah um but it's it's a blessing in one way then because I can really focus on myself. Yeah. Because when you run a gym, all my time and my energy is with my clients. Yeah. Because it's my business, you know. So um, yeah, training is going great. Let's um, talk about your gym. So your gym is uh, Dan Chapman Boxing. Yeah, DC Boxing DC Academy. DC Boxing Academy, and um, it's based in uh, my steak. Sunny my steak, yeah. Sunny my steak up in the valleys. In the valleys, boy. So um. Yeah, how's that going? Yeah, to be fair, I started off, you know, in just, you know, I don't run before I can walk, you know. I started yeah. off in a cheap unit, freezing and I know eating, nothing. Yeah. Um, you know, and I just started building my clientele and, and, and people know that my knowledge in boxing is a really high standard yeah. from, from my amateur background and the things I've won previously with boxing. So, you know, I am well respected in what I do and what I teach with boxing. Um, and to be fair, you know, I do a lot of fitness classes um, and people love to punch things so you know yeah. what a great way of getting fit um, yeah. and all my people in the local in my local area love it um, so it's not just I teach boxing to children uh, yeah. and adults I do women's only classes I do personal training um, and it's been really it's been going absolutely awesome um, it looks like it's doing really well man and it is and it, was, it was going so well until the lockdown so Lockdowns, I yeah. moved to a bigger building you know a fantastic yeah. facility I have now Um but you know we don't hold for the minute. Yeah, so we're saying about um, lockdowns and that uh, you've had a little bit of um, hassle with the police, have you? Well, yeah. to be fair, like you know, I've I followed all the rules and the yeah. guidelines. You know, I haven't opened the gym once no. for any financial benefit. No. You know, um, the gym has been closed. You know, 
Uh, but obviously, when I announced my fight last week, I got to start training. I got yeah. to get back in camp. Well, it's your, you know, you you, you, need, <laughs> you no. need to train. Like, well, I got a co- professional contract with BKB. Yeah. That, I, I, that I can fight. You know. Yeah. And so I I didn't really, to be honest, with you Sean want to be traveling to other gyms. Yeah. Because on the second lockdown, I had COVID. Yeah. And you know, a few of my mates have had, and they were bad for a couple of days. Yeah. But I, was, I was bad for about 16, 17 days. Like. So if I I know if I have COVID again. It could potentially ruin my yeah. fight on my camp, so you know I wanted to form a little bubble at the gym. Yeah, and it, and I'm training there on my own. Like surely that's the safer way to do it, though. Well, I was training there on my own. I got yeah. I do I got all my training plan, but on a on a Sunday or, or a Wednesday, I'd organise sparring. Um, obviously I need that. It's a huge part of my camp. Yeah, and a few of the lads I spoke to before this. And said, you know, would you be willing to help me out in my camp? You know, mm. I only need you. I don't need to re- be traveling to other gyms where there's loads of people there. Um, and not the the two of the boys said, look, we're on furlough. We're not mixing with any of our p- grandparents or any yeah. or, or with anybody. You know, we're working from home, and we can help you with the gym and, and form a bubble. You know, um, because we didn't just do this not thinking about it. You know, yeah. we we still know that COVID is real, and we wanted to follow all yeah. the guidelines as well. So you know, one. Last Wednesday, I was doing my training, um, and I wanted the boys, two of the boys there as well, to do video footage. Yeah. Um, obviously promoting my fight. Yeah. Because this is my only income right now, Sean. Yeah. My business is closed. Yeah. So you know this is my job. You know. So, yeah. Um, it's affecting so many jobs, and uh, you know, so many people's um, lives have been affected with this lockdown. Massively, and you know, I was training there on the Wednesday. And all of a sudden, there was four riot vans, 15 police surrounding the building, 15 coppers now. <laughs> they, they, knew, they knew they were pulling up with a BKB uh, fighters well, it's, 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 not, it's not the point. You know, all the other rooms weren't inactive. It's the, only the ring room we yeah, were using for wrong. my sparring. Uh, and we'd all socially distanced in the room, and I was doing my pad work while the yeah. boys were doing the videos. And, you know, they're going to break down my two grand door. Like, yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, I haven't had no previous convictions. You know, I followed all the rules throughout every lockdown. Um, and they treated me like as if I was scum of the yeah. earth. And I just, I, I was a bit gutted really because, you know, I always give respect to everybody in our community. Yeah. And we know what the local police, you know, they always patrol the area. They look after, uh, uh, you know, the elderly, the making sure the children stay in line. But the way they treated me that day wasn't the way I would want to no. be treated by anybody. It's not... They, with everything that's going on with these lockdowns, they seem to be... And and this is what you find with people who get done for speeding. You, you get made out to be a right, you know, criminal. If it gets dragged to the courts, they're like, you know, you've broken the law. And I mean, yeah. it, it's just a bit over the top, isn't it? Well, the, the thing is, right, you know, I mean... The, <laughs> You got paedophiles out there. You got drug exactly drug, drug dealers driving around in the BMWs, flying around the roads at ninety yeah. mile an hour, and nothing is done. Like you well, know? there's not there's no money and for fines involved in they, it. That's they, the problem. They, they can't bust, you know, yeah. through a paedophile's door because they're not breaking COVID rules because they're, they're get, on their own. Yeah, but yet they're watching child pornography on it's, a laptop. It's fucking so, unbelievable. You know, I mean, I was a bit gutted, to be honest with you, because yeah. I don't take things. Lightly when camp, and I'm no. like I'm really structured in what I do with my training, Sean. Yeah. So you know every day is planned, and what I do, I don't just wake up and think I'm going to do this today. No. You know this is my biggest fight in my life. Yeah. Well, um, the thing is, you you can't be going into that fight with regrets, thinking, oh, I oh, I couldn't train because the police wouldn't let. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, at the end, you've got your you know no. your path you've got to go down. But the thing is, with the rules, you know, I just didn't want to be travelling to other boroughs and, you know, other boxing gyms. Because I know, because you've got a pro licence in your boxing gym, yeah. then, obviously, people can train there. But that doesn't mean COVID isn't in there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, for me, is I just wanted to keep my bubble small, simple, low cost effect. It's low cost because my business is run dry at the minute. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to get my camp in line and structured, you know. Yeah. But now, you know, they in the end, um, they find the boys £60 each. Um. And because I was the organizer, they th- they they find me a thousand pound. Oh, it's it's ridiculous. That is a thousand pound when my business is run dry. Well, this is what they seem to be doing: is targeting people when they're at their lowest points now, and then you know you sort of twist in the knife. To be honest with you, well, you know, I mean, hundred percent lesson learned, and I know I can't do it at the minute, even though I can because I got a professional. It's just fucking that contract, so. but 
to be honest with you, for me, Sean, is just like now I'm gonna have to really like I gotta travel to Manchester. I gotta mm. travel, you know, to other pro gyms you now. And when I I didn't have to do that, when I had it on my doorstep in my gym, yeah, with the same circle of people day in day out, yeah. So you know, I, I'm just a little bit gutted that they like other gyms have opened and they've had a slap on the wrist, yeah. And also yeah, that they've had hundred twenty five pound fine, you know, me. I am done nothing breaking the COVID rules, and they found they find me a thousand pounds. It is it is sickening, mate. It is sickening. I mean, um, you know, you you you've got one of your dream fights coming up now, and yeah, and to to be fair, you know, changing the negative to a positive, um, I am just really excited for this fight. Yeah. I mean, I've waited a long time as well. You know, yeah. obviously because of the lockdowns and. You know, we've had I've had two back to back camps, and uh, I know I've had to be fair, I've had some great sponsorship from my local companies, and you were one of my main sponsors as well. Yeah. Um, and on my last camp, I used a thousand pound of my sponsor money on camp. Yeah. You know, traveling, going to Spain. Yeah. You know, doing all these things, put them in place. Yet then the fight gets called off. Yeah. So you know. Cause yeah, well, like you're saying, but then uh, with uh, Marbella, yeah, you um you used to go to Marbella, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell tell uh, tell the podcast a bit about what you used to do. Well, obviously, I run a fitness business, so for me, is I wanted people to have an insight on what um the fitness journey out in Marbella. Yeah. Um, I got two really good mates who run Champs Camp. Um, one of them is Tom Stalker, who was my former Olympic captain on yeah. Team GB. Uh, and the other guy is Joe Sheriff, who's an absolute top guy. Yeah. Um, and they decided to start building um, relationships with other gym owners or clientels where they would do a fitness camp out in Marbella. Yeah. So, and I've been four camps in since. And it's really? absolutely epic. We do strength and conditioning out there. We go it looks the, really good. Oh, we do. I'll, uh, I'll put some um, clips up on you now. Uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, bring please some do. Clips yeah. up on it. We had Biggie out there with us. You well, know, I was going to say Biggie Morris. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to see you. We'll get him on the podcast. Oh, 100% one day. I will. He's a, he's a good lad. He makes me laugh. Yeah, we'll get him on. But um, to be fair, you know, um, it was just it's just an amazing experience. We got to go to the MTK boxing gym and train there. Yeah. Uh, and every day is planned, and all your food is involved. Your all the training, or everything is in with the price. Yeah. Uh, and it's such a really good price that you know you can't even go to Portugal for that price. Um, yeah. Your food is in. You 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 got your, the apartments that we stay in are absolutely beautiful. Yeah, you know, and I just can't wait for the world to go back to normal. To get so back can, to normal, so we to, can do it again. Yeah, to 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 give people the experience, yeah. even if they never go again. It looks really good in yeah. fairness, because um, I've said you know I'd seen it on your social media, and um, it does look. I mean, it's it just it's it's a bit like it's a holiday. But you get him fit. So yes, yeah, so a very positive. This is, you know, the, the the thing is you've got you've got beautiful weather because out in Spain the weather is you know seventy yeah. percent of the time it's really good out there. Especially and the Marbella times you go. is nice, isn't it? Marbella is an absolutely beautiful place. Yeah, I'd love to live there myself. The port, yeah, it is. It's port lovely, weather, isn't it? stunning. And you know, I mean, the the setup that Joe and 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 Tom do out that does out there is just it is a lifetime experience. Yeah, and when you come home. You know, you're feeling you know, ready to attack the gyms yeah. mentally. You know, uh, and it's just it's just an amazing experience. I I I recommend it to anybody. Yeah, like. it looks really good in fairness, and uh, you know you've you started boxing at such a young age. How young were you when you started boxing? Uh, to be fair, I was quite a late starter, Sean. I mean, you know, most boxers, you know, have gone to a high level. I started at the ages of five and six. You know, Christ. where you know. For me, because I, I didn't have a good start in as a child from a young age, I didn't have, you know, a really good background. That's that's what I was going to um, ask you about. Uh, you know, with your childhood, yeah, um, you had a bit of a troubled childhood. Yeah, I I had a really shitty childhood to be honest, with you Sean, and I mean, from the ages of three up to the ages of eleven, twelve, life wasn't good. Like you know, I mean, you know, my mum was a massive alcoholic and dr- and she took a lot of drugs uh, mm. because she met you know the wrong w- wrong people yeah. you know and um, I don't call him my stepdad but the guy she met yeah. you know he took her down that road of drugs and alcohol and that's when I lost my mum like really so yeah. you know going 
looking back on my childhood, it just was surrounded by drugs, alcohol, you know, abusive relationships, mm. you know. Um, me from a young kid, you know, I was, I was so little from a, from a young age. I'm yeah. small now, you know. Yeah, I, but, I, I know but, the feeling, man. But when I was little, I was so little and and and, and not nourished properly because yeah. I, did, I didn't eat the right foods. Yeah. Um, you know, I used to get beat, you know, I used to see so many bad things. Yeah. You know, and I remember when I was a kid, like Sean, that I died under the bed even, you know, eating gone off biscuits right for my stepfather because I knew he'd, when he'd come home, he'd give me a fucking armor in. Oh, like. yeah. So, you know, from a young kid, you know, when I used to open the fridge, there'd be nothing in there. Like, so yeah. I, I remember sitting on my kitchen floor when I was a kid eating raw sausages. Like, so Fuck, it's, it's something it's, that's, that's stuck in your mind. Like. It has. I doubt with my past, Sean, but I mean, you know, I'm, I'm easy, I I can talk about my past. Yeah. And, you know, being brought up through drugs and alcohol, watching my mother, you know, be pissed every day. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've saved a life about in six times because when you get so drunk, your tongue slides yeah, about your throat, yeah. you know, and it was just like a, it's just a usual job for me to pull that out there, <laughs> you know, and put my mother in a recovery position. Like, so, you know, um, it's a lot to take in, you know, you talk, it's a lot to take in for an adult, but when you're talking, you were a child having to deal with these, um, young, yeah, it was just a young age and I was so switched on for a young kid that I just knew after going through all these bad things, you know, it's, and it went some, you know, the alcohol was bad, you know, but, mm. you know, having all these unusual people, men coming back and forth the house, you know, off they face on drugs, taking, you know, drinking bottles of methadone, smoking, yeah. taking cocaine and to the bigger drugs like heroin and stuff, you know, yeah. you don't understand it from a young age, but yeah. I just knew that one day I'm going to get out of this, Yeah, you know, and that's, I was really positive, even though what I went through, I was really happy kid, yeah. but a kid has been through so much. Yeah. Um. So, you know, moving on from there, and obviously because the way my lifestyle was, I was in and out foster care, then and hostels and foster homes, and care homes. So you know, I that, I, I was that for you that um, because uh, you know there's a lot of kids who are going through that now. Um. I mean, it's hard because when you're a young boy, uh, and you're in foster care, you know the parents always have their foot in the door. You know, mm. they always say things like, "Oh, when when I get better, now I'm gonna, I promise you that we're gonna do this. Yeah. I'm gonna buy you this for Christmas." Yeah. And because they don't change, those promises get broken all the yeah. time. And when you're a young kid, the promises that's what breaks the child the is deal. is when you promise your child you're gonna do this for them, and you never do it, and it never happens. And like growing up, that's where you know later on in life sometimes that can catch up with you yeah you know and it is the f- fact of is when i was the age of uh, eight years of age i remember my mum she went to jail um and i thought you know what even at eight years of age i could think like she's going to be clean for two years she's, she was in jail she had a two years yeah. sentence right um so i thought she's gonna she's not she can't take drugs for an, an alcohol for two years you know my mum's gonna get better like but it you know and, in there, and, is it? No, it's, it's, it was, it was like, brilliant. Yeah, you know, she was in a woman's jail up in Liverpool um, or somewhere far away. Yeah. I remember going visiting her once with my social worker. Um, and, you know, the letters I had every week were like, I had hundreds and hundreds of letters. Like, I had less, so many letters would fill this room. Yeah. And, and, and even my, my foster parents thought I was going to go back home when a sentence was yeah. done. My social worker practically had my bag, bags packed. Yeah. And the day she'd come out of jail, she rung me drunk and off her face. And from that day, Sean, that was the line. That was That it. was when I thought, my life starts enough now. Enough is enough. I was eight years yeah. of age. I, was, I actually found an amazing foster home. Because yeah. I'd been in and out of foster homes all my life. And this foster home treated me like their own. Yeah. So I was in a good place, but at the time, in my mind, I was going back to my mum. Yeah. But that day she phoned me, Sean, I just thought, no. this is the end. This is where this person doesn't become my mum anymore. Yeah. These foster parents are going to be my parents. Yeah. And my foster parents were a little bit like, is, is, did he mean what he just said? Mm. And they respected it because some don't, yeah. you know. And when I said, look, my life is you with you guys now. And, yeah. you know, that's when my life started. I was the age of, I was about 10, 11, where, you know, it was hard two years after leaving my mum go because mm. I had to. I couldn't take on any problems anymore. Yeah. I couldn't be let down with all those promises anymore. And I, 
the this foster family loved me like and yeah that's then a, a local boxing gym opened in our area in a place called blind Grinvy. yeah and um a, a boxing club hadn't hadn't been opened in about 50 years is it yeah yeah and uh, as a guy called john radmore he opened the boxing club he's passed away now hasn't he yeah he's passed away mm. now but um he opened the club and again you know he was like family he treated me like his yeah. own son um, and I started boxing and, you know, I started winning fights and I went on to win, you know, 10 to 11 Welsh titles in a row. Yeah. Um, when I it went on to win a Commonwealth Games out in India and my jo- my coach, John Radmore, supported me and his wife all the way to this. And, yeah. And then finally the dream happened when I got on to Team GB as an athlete. You know, I came from yeah. a little village in Blind Gwynvy. Yeah. Like, people in Batalba don't even know where Blind Gwynvy is. And you're up on the big stage, yeah? But I was up on the big stage and getting paid by lottery fund, you know? So, yeah. you know, yes, it was a massive story and leading up to that. But, yeah. like I said earlier on, I knew that one day I was going to get out of that situation. Yeah. I stayed positive and... It, it didn't have to be that I was going to be a boxer. Or, no. It, or I love football. I was football yeah. crazy, you know, but... When I got to where I was and realised I was good at a sport, I put all that anger and all them anxieties into a box and put it into boxing. Channeled it, yeah. And the thing is, as I've grown up, a lot of people don't know that I've been through all these things. Yeah. And they think, oh, he's a cocky little shit. He calls himself... <laughs> he, uh, he calls himself Indian Spice. And, uh, <laughs> he's a cocky He's a cocky, co- cocky little tan little shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, people don't know my past because no. I'm alright to talk about it but yeah. I've dealt with it Yeah, I've let it go well, the thing is it's not like everybody walks around with a big tan eye shouting out the, their <laughs> fucking past is it no but I, know? no I know but you know I think a lot of people you know like because they have their parents in the door yeah. um, from a young age where they kind of get away from, like this is where the the care system yeah. is broken because unfortunately social services tell the parents that they have rights which yeah. they do have rights yeah um so how bad you treat your child your son or your daughter um going through this, when your child goes through that care system these parents are very clever they know somebody else is looking after their child yeah you know and yeah they know they don't have to spend any money on it all they gotta do is go to a lack review every month and yeah pr- and, and promise their kids things that they can't give them yeah so it's strange in the care system when you get to the age of 16 um, you can move out of your foster home. Can you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, again, you, yeah. you can move out. They'll sort you out with a little flat and give you a little bit of budget to buy a TV, etc. Which is amazing, you know. Sometimes, uh, yeah. You know, it, it gives you that independence, and that's fine, you know. But unfortunately, because the parent have always had the foot in the door, Sean. Yeah. That kid will always love that parent. Yeah. It doesn't matter what they have done to them, Sean. No. That yeah. parent will crawl back, and again, the kid becomes the adult again. Yeah, in that looking relationship. After the... So the kid then goes on to put milk and bread in the yeah. fridge and the cupboards. Yeah. And then that kid takes on all our responsibility, Sean. And what happens then? That kid's capacity can't cope with being an adult at that age. No. And then no. that's why the knock on effect of drugs and alcohol becomes the child. Yeah. The child didn't want that. All he wanted was love. Yeah. And now the child has gone wanted on. Wanted to be loved by Wanted to be loved by their parents. parents because they say that they've changed and they haven't. Yeah. And then that child goes into drugs and alcohol and there's the knock-on effect, you know? Yeah. And this is why, you know, from a young age, I think children should get adopted sooner, yeah. you know, and or put into longer, long-term foster homes quicker. There's definitely, um, you know, th- there's too many legalities at the minute. It is. There's too many legalities and what's happening is is everybody's trying to be to the book instead of opening a case using your fucking common sense for yeah, a lot yeah. of it you know a lot of it is common sense instead of trying to do it to the book yeah 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 100% and the, and the thing is see um Sean is what what the way the social services see it is is that because the parent has tried or been t- attended the lack of reviews. Mm. When our kid gets to seven or eight, you, you really can't then put in for adoption because the relationship yeah. is so strong with yeah. the parents still, and and that's where the imbalance is, yeah. you know. And this is why they can't step in. But you know, not all the children who are going through these bad things, through drugs, alcohol, abusive parents, 
yeah. you know, just not having the basic needs even, you know. Yeah. Um, nine, you know, nine out of ten kids can't make the decision that I made at the eight years of age. No. I'm just going to go, do you know what? Mom, that's the end of the road, but they're lovely. Yeah. I'm going to get on. I'm going to, I need to focus yeah. on my life. You, you know. You, you've been left hanging on too long. You know, but, it's, it's such a shame you, you went through, through what you did when you were younger. Um, like I, I haven't experienced anything like that. My no, parents, no, yeah. are, you know, they're not divorced. They're still together. My grandparents, they're still together. We all sort of grow up with different um, sort of upbringings yeah. and uh, are taught different things, really. But, um, you know, I guarantee the person that you are today um, is is because a lot of what's happened to you in your past has made you the, you know, the fighter, the strong-willed yeah. person that you are today. Yeah, I, I you know, I mean... I've never been one to play on my past either. No. I mean, you know, I respect somebody who hasn't had the same background as me. We've had, a, like you said, a, a decent childhood. Yeah. You know, and parents have been pro like parents the way yeah. things should be, you yeah. know. And I'm not saying parents don't have obstacles. We all have our yeah. obstacles. But, um, you know, if someone comes to me with their problems, like one of my close friends, I, I can still relate. And, you know, because yeah. they haven't been through I, what I've been through, yeah. doesn't mean I'm going to like, well, your problems are small yeah. problem. Yeah. It's not it's a big problem to you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, everybody so, takes things yeah, differently. Yeah. And for me, it's like, you know, I, I people don't know my past because I've dealt with it. Yeah. I don't play the victim. I'm a survivor, like. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm one of those ones where... I'm not having sympathy off anyone with my past. No. I'm not that person. I wanted to grow up to be nothing like those people. Yeah. So this is me. Yeah. So, you know, and the ones who have got to know me know a little bit about my past, but, you know, I still don't go into detail with my no. friends because I feel like that's, that's negative. It's that's negativity, yeah. you know? Negativity. You know, I, I, I love just going to my friends and, you know, and just chatting bullshit. Just having a laugh. And, and just, yeah, just being ourself. Yeah. You know, like you seem, you seem like, um, you know, a happy-go-lucky guy. Yeah, cheeky you're, chappy. You're like, always uh, smiling, you seem to be anyway. Yeah, and, and this is the thing, you know, go, like going back to BKB, um, a lot of the guys who went to BKB, like they, they these big tough guys with tattoos. And, yeah. And I know, I know you do tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> the gay in the chair. Gay no. in the chair. And have, you know, <laughs> bad boys for life across yeah. here. But you know, I'm not one of those guys who who, who call themselves the machine. Like, yeah. I'm a little Indian guy. Indian with, spice with blue eyes. You know, who just quite sharp with his hands. You know, so yeah. you know, I I don't go up there giving up Arizona. This is why I call myself Indian spice. You know. My partner. I think it's. I think it's funny, man. I think it's funny. No, my partner. She. Um. She gave me the idea as well. Like, yeah. So, uh, I said that's actually really good. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna stick with that. Um, and you know, and I thought it's bring a bit of laughter to BKB. It's yeah. just a, a bit of spice, like you know, bit of sp spice it up a bit. <laughs> so and I have, and people love you it. You have spiced it people up. People love bit. it, like so. You've done well. I mean, um, how many fights is it? Three fights you've had in. Um, BKB today. I'm, I'm, I'm only on my second. A second, is second, it? Yeah, I, oh, yeah, there was one postponed, wasn't it? Yeah, I well, I had, I bought the like, Martin Thorne was my first one. Yeah. And you know, I didn't tell anybody about this fight. Yeah. So obviously, I I was coming back. You know. Did you tell your missus about it? Didn't tell anybody. <laughs> didn't obviously, tell I was in big trouble, right? Um, obviously, a lot of people didn't know the, the reason why I've got into BKB is because. Yeah. Um, I was a really good amateur, yeah. You know, and my dreams were always going to turn professional. You know, yeah. that's that was the dream, you know. And before the dream was Olympic Games, yeah. And I was, you know, heading perfectly in the right direction. You know, I went on to be JRS in the Welsh Seniors, qualified me for the World Championships. Mm. Went on to be Chama Goldrick, who's the current Commonwealth champion on the weight above. You know, was a, another great fighter. Yeah. Um, and it was, you know, I get myself in a position where I was qualifying for the Olympic Games. Yeah. You know, and a week before the World Championships, I had a huge motorbike accident. Shit. Um, I broke my femur. I broke loads oh, of bones. Fuck. I was, it was a, I was in a bad way. I, I, yeah. My career was over. The doctor said I'd never train again. Oh, he said, you'd be lucky to walk without a limp again, even no train again, you know. So, you know, I broke my femur in like three or four places, you know, 
and it was it was seven years of rehab, Sean. Oh shit! You know, after everything I went through, that's and, massive. Like, and I thought, you know, I'm finally in the you know the right place with my career, mm. qualifying for the Olympic Games, um, and then a, a, you know a freak accident happens out of the blue, like a week before going to the World Championships, you know, and Fuck. that would have got me a place to go to Olympic Games, and it was just. All the hours, you know, I don't think people understand in boxing that to be at my level where I was, yeah. the time. The time. You no, know, I mean, you, I look back and I think in the hours and hours of training, I can't even count them. I can't even, it don't, the number doesn't even exist, yeah. you know, and to break my femur in such a bad way and the other bones that I had, and, you know, I was in such a bad state. Um, I was in a wheelchair for like a your long time. Your leg was the worst, was it? Yeah, I was in a wheelchair for ages, like, you know. And, and did you have trouble with your arms as well? Well, I went on end to have a, it was seven years of rehab with the femur. Um, I started to get myself back to um, decent, like I could walk, I could, you know, I could curl some weights. I was doing a bit of weight training because yeah. I thought I can't, you know, I've trained all my life. I've got to do something, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I thought there's a local gym by me called Billy's Gym. Um, and he had some old school solid bags, you know, the ones that have been taped up about a yeah. million times. And I started it in the bag again, you know, with my limp. Yeah. <laughs> I had a limp like, uh, So, you know, Daniel Clumfoot Chapman. Like, and, yeah. uh, and I started it in the bag and I saw, I thought I missed this like yeah. so much. And I started pushing in my training. And, you know, seven years later, like after my old Olympic dream got crushed. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden, um, I went, went up to watch a BKB. And I thought, this is nuts. Yeah. You know, and uh, after the show, um, one of my mates, he said, oh, do you fancy fighting on this? I reckon you could, I reckon you could beat the main man, Jimmy Sweeney. Yeah. I'd fight any man. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> I, 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 I said, I've been training for months now at the gym. I, I've yeah. been feeling sharp. My, my limp has gone, you know. Yeah. I haven't sparred or anything yet, like. Yeah. But um, I said, yeah, I'll have a crack. And all of a sudden, the fight was matched. Oh, my so, you God. Know, um, like... I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my partner. I didn't tell oh. my mates. Nothing. I was training in my, another gym up the road for me doing bag work I was only doing bag work like yeah and uh, it was at the London O2 the first time that I think it was the first show they put at the London O2 uh, I told my partner I was going to the body expo <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and we went up a few of the boys we went up in the car yeah. drove all the way to London up at five in the morning um, went in there and just Dan Chapman spark come back like I went in there I, I think Felt I knocked him out death. I knocked him out in about 50 seconds with a jab I hit him with a jab so fast I don't think anyone's seen it <laughs> and then obviously someone videoed it and went put it on Facebook that's the clip and then um, I was in trouble then yeah. so um, yeah, what you know, she, uh, what, what, well, she what did she, the she, missus say she said um, dad I've run the body expo today there's a baby expo going on so you're not there so where, <laughs> so where the fuck are you like oh, so I just like oh um, I went to like a, a farmer's strength and conditioning place oh, I print screen right. a picture sent it to her and she was just like, nah, you're not, where are you? You're lying to me. <laughs> uh, and I said, I, I, I remember coming back, we didn't get back, back to like, hours, early hours oh, in the morning. No. And I parked outside the house. I was, I could see my hands were swollen because it was oh. bare knuckle, my hands were killing me. And I thought, right, let's face the music. Oh, shit. Um, but that was the moment I realised i got to start doing what I love again. You, you've um, got to, Matt. Um, and everyone after that, I had so many messages saying, Dan, you've got to get back fighting. Yeah. Um, and it's been such a long time and I was a little bit nervous because I thought, oh, you know, yeah. was this just a one-off thing? You yeah. know, and there was a lot of hassle behind the scenes after it. And, yeah. You know, but I fell back in love with the sport. But that's, that is the thing and I, I was going to, I was going to touch upon that when you brought it up just now where you said about the hours you've lost and wasted after and even though it may seem like it was wasted, it, it's, it's clearly not now, you know, you look at, the, the, you know, you move so smoothly when you're training, when you're fighting, you're so sharp Without all those hours you put in before, you wouldn't be that there now. Like, do you know, know what? I I'm not even lying to you, but like, you know, when I was a kid, and all, you know, I used to call them old people then, right? <laughs> How old are you, Sean? Thirty-seven. Oh, you was one of those people. Yeah, man. yeah. And I, I used to go, you know, what, boy, life experience. You can't buy it. And I used to say, yeah, sure life enough. experience. We're all about. Yeah, you might have got it. You haven't. Like, yeah. Right? And do you know, I eat those words yeah. massively because, you know. 
I didn't box for a long time after my accident, but it gave me, you know, I built a home. Yeah. You know, I created a family, you know, um, something that I've never had, you know. Yeah. So, you know, I love, I think I love my dogs. I love yeah. my dogs more than people. You yeah. Know, uh, I got four dogs. See, and, a, see a lot of pictures with you. With yeah, dogs. they're my babies. Like, you know, yeah. I, I don't even like humans. They're just like dogs. <laughs> um, but, you know, it having that was such a foundation. That what I was missing all my life. That's what you always craved. It, what, it was, I didn't know if I craved it. I just never had it. So yeah. I didn't know what it felt like. You didn't know what so it was. So when I come back, I was in a good place mentally and physically in the end because I got my body back in great condition, um, which I didn't think I could have. Yeah. Um, and my life experience from the past, all those hours, like you said, I put in, and now it's coming together, like, you know, it all, you know, moulds together nicely. Yeah. And, yeah, I'm not saying I didn't have obstacles in my life or, or, or in my relationship, you know. Yeah. We, we have obstacles and, and, and troubles. Who doesn't? But we, but we get through it and, you know, times can be tough that way because, you know, when you've been with someone for so long. Yeah. You know, we've been together since she was 16. I was, yeah. I, I was 18. You know, it's a long time together. It's been over 10 years, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, we've had our troubles and, and our obstacles. But, like you said, moving forward with, with my boxing, you know, building a foundation, a gym as my job. Yeah. You know, I'm surrounded by supporting and helping people to be boxers. Yeah. With fitness. You know, that's the place where I want to be, you know. And because my dream didn't happen. No. You know, this is not where I wanted to be in the beginning. No. I didn't no. want to be, you know, settled down or... Um, I, I was a one-man team. Like, you know, yeah. my focus was just purely just boxing. Yeah. And that's how I could put all the hours. And that's how I was so good at my sport. Yeah. I had no distractions. I didn't allow anybody to distract no. me. No. You know, and I don't think anything could have at the time. No. But, you know, where my life is going now, going with the BKB, yes, you know, like a few of my friends, like I got like Joe Cardina, you know, Liam Williams. Yeah. They are doing so well in the sport. And I yeah. don't en- I don't envy them at all. I just, I'm so proud of them. Yeah. Because I know how long it's taken them to get there. The work is gone. Yeah, I, like, I'm not going to be one of those guys down the pub 10 years' no. time saying, oh, I, I, I was there with Joey or, yeah, I, I, was, oh, yeah. I, I, won, I won a Welsh vest when I was nine. Yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. You, you know those ones, do <laughs> yeah, you? Know? I yeah. played for the Swans when he was 11. Yeah. <laughs> You know, there's no goals in him. He's, no, it's just tag football. You know, but playing with a pig's head, like yeah. You know, I I'm not going to be one of those guys down the pub ten years time saying I could have done this, I couldn't. It didn't happen for me. Yeah, it didn't. You know, my my career just got ended, my whole life got stripped away, and I had to start fresh. Yeah. You know, and I didn't know where it was going to lead. I didn't know it was going to lead a bit bare knuckle boxing. Yeah. A lot of people call me crazy. You know, but you know. For me, is my I'll be honest with you, even though I love Ben Knuckle and when I'm gluing years fighting for a world title on yeah. the 27th of March, that's amazing. But my passion is in teaching, yeah. You know, I'm loving teaching the kids, the adults. Yeah. You know, I've got so much boxing experience that I can pass on to, yeah. especially pro fighters, you know, who get rinsed in the pro game right now, yeah. like promoters. You know, I've built an amazing relationship with companies like MTK, yeah, which are a fantastic company, but. This is just the bonus now of me fighting for a world title with B- BKB. Yeah. This is something that, you know, I am doing for myself. Yes, yeah, another so, fair that in your cap. Yeah, really. it is another fair of my even though my main priority is the gym. But yeah. this is just something for me. It's a personal thing. I've always wanted to win a world title, you know, yeah. and it's just a great opportunity for for me to And I think you're gonna do it. I think you're gonna do it, mate. I've gotta be honest. I mean you know, so sometimes the stars align you know, you, you've you sort of been put off um, and hit obstacles through so many paths. You know, you, you were so dedicated to boxing. Yeah. And that sort of, uh, you hit a fork in the road with that, which you could have gone two ways. Yeah, you could yeah. have just completely fizzled out and just, but you've somehow, even after going through a horrific accident like that, stayed on path. And obviously, because of the time it's taken you to uh, heal up, seven years is a long time. It is, yeah. You know, this this is the the opportunity that's presented itself now. And, yeah. you know, it purely comes from determination that you're still even fighting. Do you know what? It's short. I know people say you must be strong-minded. I am strong-minded, but it's just I'm still obsessed with the sport. Like, yeah. I love it, you know, and... 
as you know, a lot of ex athletes they never give back to the community, do they? No. You know, no. they either go over beasts or they end up taking yeah. drugs and alcohol. Yeah. They always go down the slippery road, you know. But yeah. you know, health is so important. There's no money on health. No. You know, we're going through this lockdown right now and our mental health and our and our life's lives at the minute yeah. are, are not in a great place. So, you know, being one of those people in my community where I can be positive and try and drag those people out of those ruts. It's worth seeing their faces when they light up and after the gym sessions I do with them. It's that face is worth it all day long. You yeah. know, and for me is when you love doing something where you do it, does it even is it even a job? No. But, and that's what I am with it all right I now. I feel a bit like that with uh, my tattooing to be honest. I, I don't feel like it's work, you know, I enjoy yeah. doing it. The the biggest problem we've got at the minute is trying to get the doors open to get people in with lockdowns but it's you know that that's another thing i've said in one of my other podcasts is about following your dreams you yeah. know i'm a big believer if you believe in something enough you will make it happen and a lot of it isn't down to like my daughter goes on about um positive thinking and I can't remember the name of this thing she said she's into now and I was like what the hell are you talking about and she's like oh, if you imagine it'll happen it'll happen I'm like yeah but you've got to put the work in yeah, you yeah. can't just sit there every night and go oh, I hope it happens it don't oh, work like that you've got to be a doer you've you? got to actually yeah the positive thinking puts you in the motion of that's what I'm going for but yeah. you you can't just do uh, no preparation whatsoever and then go to bed in the night and think, all right, please let it happen. No, I, I'd be honest with you, it's, it's really hard, especially in today's society with parents and kids, because I've always been a hard worker. It happens from a young age and you've got to try and carry, you've got to put that into them yeah. from a young age for it to carry on. But, you know, the world is a dangerous place these days, so mm. we don't allow our children to to do the things that we used to do when no. we were kids. You know, you can no. leave your front door open years ago, yeah. and that's only 10 years ago, but now... You know, we do shield, well, you know, I would imagine you shield your kids from yeah. a lot of bad because you know what's going on. Yeah. So that means that we do do too much for them. Yeah. And that's that's not your fault. That's no. just the way life is going and social media and everything. Yeah. So, you know, it is um, making sure you build that, like, you know this because you, you're amazing with your kids. But it's making sure you have that amazing relationship with your child yeah. from to not to lie to you. So when things do anything. go pee tong, yeah. that they can just be honest and upfront with you. Yeah. Not being one of those parents who's gonna lose their shit yeah. and then they hide. Because yeah. they're gonna do it anyway. Yeah. You know, even if even if they got a good relationship. Regardless, they, yeah. If they get peer pressured into a situation, they're just gonna do it. So it's just a making sure you're there to pick up the pieces and communication. You know, from, it, like, that's from, the main thing, isn't it? It is like from a young age. I didn't have that. I didn't have that. When things weren't pee tong, I didn't have yeah. anybody to talk to, yeah. or have that parent to support me and, and and get me through those life things. You know, I I had to do my homework when I was yeah. a kid on my own. Yeah. And you know, half the time I didn't bring the homework in because mm. my mother would scribble up and chuck me in the you bin. You didn't know what you know, to it do, worked. really. Yeah, like. I, so I didn't have that support academically either. Yeah. You know, so you know, going forward, you know, yeah, relationship and communication, communication. is so important. Right? You know, it's it's that's one thing I've got with my daughter is, um, she'll come to me and tell me anything like you know. Yeah, that's um, awesome. She if if there's something that's worrying her, she'll she'll wanna to come and say something or, yeah, yeah. or bring it up, and because I I think you know it's hard as a parent because like you know some of the stuff hard. you don't want to hear it you know hard, but yeah. you've got to respect the child for giving you. Yeah, the, the, the utmost truth on that. Yeah, um, you know, it's um, like I, I think I'm so much more laid back than my parents were. Because yeah, yeah. I, if I had told my parents when I was in school I wanted to be a tattoo artist, <laughs> I would have had a fucking slap across <laughs> yeah, the year. Yeah. And they would have been like, What are you talking about, you idiot? Yeah, no, no. but be a policeman. <laughs> they hated it, they, they hated tattoos at the time, and I no, they it, hated it is, it. it was, and it forced me up away off my path a bit. It and did, then yeah. so it's you know it's only when you've got a bit older it's like no hang oh, on a minute passion, I'm man. fucking this is what I want to do this is what I want to do this yeah. is where you know and you've got to follow your passions and your dreams because it, it's all well and good you know my parents don't like tattoos yeah this is just an example yeah yeah or, you know it could be anything you know it could be that you, your parents didn't like boxing so they were never interested in boxing or, yeah. do, do you know what I mean it, it could it's could go a, in. Either both direction, way. like 
but it's a, it's just a, a matter of doing something that makes you happy. It does. It, it really does make me happy. And the thing is, when I am, um, you know, I've only got a couple of years left in me, so you know, I've got something then to put my time and energy in as with the yeah. gym and teaching. I think that's the most important part is that, you know, you see ex-athletes, they're good at a sport and because they've never given back to the kids or adults, then there's nothing for them to do. Yeah. And and, that's, and you can be destructive with that. Because you know? that's something that, um, you know, you you spoke about you wouldn't mind doing is uh, going like around schools. Well, I, yeah, I worked in schools. I, I worked with children with behaviour and disabilities yeah. um, before I'm in the gym. Um, so for me, it was like... I would love to do some talks at schools um, and relate to the kids because yeah. I know I could be in assembly with 600 kids there, but I know 10 of those kids would have, could be going through what I'm going through or what I went through as a young yeah. boy. And that's all that matters. I know I've gone home and I've related to them. And people are easily enough to be on a high horse saying this life should be this and life should yeah. be that. But it isn't for some children, not, you know, no. and for, for a lot of children. So... You can sympathise with someone, but can you emphasise with someone? It's yeah. two different things, you know? Yeah. So I know I can emphasise and give a talk, and it can be a big audience, but I know I'm targeting many individuals who can leave that assembly and say, do you know what, I'm going to be like Dan, yeah. and I'm going to get out of my situation one day, yeah. and then be able then, in a few years done, like maybe between tell people about my experience. Yeah. Now, to me, that's jackpot, like... You know, and yeah. that's for me. I saving somebody's soul. I saving someone's mind. You know, and 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 you know what? Even though I've been through these bad things, I can't relate to these people yeah. to what they are going through. Yeah. Because even though we've been through similar things, they are still going to deal different. with it their way. You know. Yeah. So I'm just there just to say I am aware of what's going on. Yeah. And I know these things are happening. So I would love to go around, you know, very soon. Like, that was the plan when the gym opened, but then yeah. it got shut. But I, I, I am going to be doing talks around schools and I keep it very simple um, and very professional with it so that, you know, they can be a positive influence on these children. Like. Well, that's it. It's, it's going to be, um, like, you're going to be looked up to, really. Well, do you know, do you know what, Sean? I do, a, I do a class in my gym every Thursday. Um, I do a class at seven pm with a with a group of um, young adults and children mm. called Special Families. Yeah. Um, these are children who have Asperger's Down syndrome. Yeah. Um, real severe, you know, special needs. Yeah. Um, and you know they they, they need twenty four hour care. You know. Yeah. Um, um, when you look at these pe- these these beautiful people, um, they think that they're restricted to do things. Yeah. But they're not. Yeah. No, I I these. These guys, like I call them my gut, my gang, like yeah. my gang. There, right? Yeah. They come in the gym, and the crew, they smile like, like it. it. Just they come in, they, they hit, they hit shit into the bag. Yeah, they doing burpees, star jumps. Yeah, honestly, now, right? Doing pad work. I had this young man, young young lad. He was um, he used to sit. He had no no interaction with his legs. You know, mm. he was in a wheelchair. We had the head guard on him, gloves <laughs> on, pads. He was sparring me in the ring. Loving it. Oh, like. do you know what? And every Thursday, I do that for them free at 7pm yeah. p- every Thursday. I don't charge them oh, a penny. That's right? amazing. Um, like, it shouldn't be. It should, it should always be yeah. that way. And, but do you know how brutal and honest they are with me? Uh. Oh. <laughs> One time I said, boys, i got sparring next Thursday. I said, I can't make it. Yeah. But the class will be on next, same, same time yeah. next Thursday. So the following week, now I went sparring. And the following week, we had the class. And he said, one of the boys, Dylan... He's my main man, he is. And some boy, he is. Right? Yeah. He goes, do you know what, Dad? I am not happy. You're so inconsistent. <laughs> so he said, okay. We, we, we've even started... I've been thinking that we should be going somewhere else. <laughs> I do you know what? Inconsistent. Just, I didn't know where to cry yeah. or laugh. Because right? yeah. he was generally dead serious. Did you see, and, yes, like, you know, it, they just... The time they walk in, to the time they leave, I'm beaming. Because... Yeah. It's just worth every penny of of time and effort with with with, with these amazing people. Makes it worth it. Yeah. Um, and that's what it should be like, you know. This yeah. is why DC Boxing Academy has such a special spark to it because, yeah. you know, my gang come in and they tear shit up. Like yeah. they come in, they, they they're not afraid of anything. I no. get, I got them skipping, I got yeah. them punching bags, and again, it's their health. It's you know? bringing, yeah, it's bringing 
It's bringing a special factor of, you know, something that you, from your personal life and your background, is is putting into this um, community as such. Yeah, yeah. It becomes a family itself, um, you know, which that is what, you know, means something to you that you were brought into yeah. that gym, you know? And that's what makes that gym more special then. It does, and I, like you said, when you love it, you know, I'm working with all different types of people with all different backgrounds. Mm. You know, it just gives you that life experience. You can't have that life experience otherwise. No. You know, and I'm working with different personalities, people with different, you know, talents. You know, some people are good at some things, some people are not good, so good at these things, yeah. other things. But you, we're together. We, we have no ego there. No. It's, I make sure ego is ripped apart, it's gone. Yeah. You know, it's disappeared. In where we are, everybody's the same. We all got arms and legs. We all yeah. we all want to be better in ourselves, but it's yeah. a way to do it. Yeah. You know, and in a humble way. It's a way to So, approach, you know, yeah. unfortunately, like, if people don't think I come across that in my bare knuckles, because the only reason is, is because I'm confident in what I do. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to go in in a fight and be all timid and stupid. No. And do that. I'm quite realistic. So when I'm fighting... I'm so confident in what I do. I'm gonna bring that to the fight game. You well, know? you look at you know. There's so many boxers out there. Everybody's got a different style. Everybody's mm. got a different thing they bring to the table. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't worry about what anybody's saying as long no, as you're I, just, I don't, just you know, swagging them out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I lose a tough year and yeah, there. Like, yeah, but yeah, you know, you I can see he's lost a bit of a tough. Yeah, but, uh, the dentist won't saw me out. <laughs> Hopefully no more. No more. No more teeth. Yeah, but it's um, it's fantastic, mate. Uh, what well yes. you're doing and how, how things are looking. You know, the future is looking bright, mate. And it is. It's and, opening you know, doors. I'm just. It's been a pleasure to come down today and do and and, and do a podcast. My first genuine proper podcast. Um, In, so uh, I feel like a movie star. The Walshies Inc. Studio. Absolutely class. Um, Get involved, guys. But uh, yeah, this you know. Hopefully we'll. Like I said, uh, I'll have you on as as much as whenever you want to say something or if you want me to come and yeah, I'd get love some that, footage of you, we'll uh, come down and we'll get a get a little uh, Balboa montage going, like start um, chopping logs out the back <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> oh gosh! But yeah, yeah. it's um, you know it's it's. It's a big fight, mate. It's I'm a excited. big fight. I'm excited for you, mate. I'm just excited. lucky I got such a good support from my community. Yeah. I mean, when I announced the, the fight, you know, everyone got behind me, like... There's and it's not, that, it's there. not because I give so much to the community. I don't do it for that, mm. you know what I mean? But I, I was really shocked, you know, everyone... As soon as I announced it, everyone was like, Dan, give me the code straight away. We'll pay per view it. Could, and everyone's going to, you know, hopefully tune in and watch me put on a really good display. I'll like. get that code off you as well. Top man. I love that as well, but um, it's gonna be class, mate. Excited. Is there anything else uh, we need to cover? No, just uh, hey, absolutely awesome. Thank you. You're gonna have the title, son. It's coming. Top man. It's coming home. Right. Thank you, guys. Any uh, questions, or if you want to know anything, uh, just drop it in the comments, and you can ask Dan, and I'm sure he'll uh, yeah, he'll, he'll get back to me, and then I can get back to you guys. So, well, sharpening, guys.